OpenAI has just released some small previews for their new voice engine, which is a model for creating custom voices, which is their nice way of saying an AI voice cloner. Now we're saying this is new because they just now released this, but they've actually been developing this since late 2022. So they've had this for a year and a half, but have said it's too dangerous to even talk about this. So they pretty much kept quiet about it, but we have sort of been able to see what it's capable of through their text to speech API and their chat GPT voice and read aloud. But it turns out they had this huge engine behind both of those things. And we're just going to go in the small examples that they have provided with us today. And it is truly groundbreaking. Now, I think it's also important to mention that the way that they're framing this article is very much an open discussion about the benefits of using this voice cloning AI, as well as acknowledging, you know, sort of the drawbacks and the dangers that this poses. And I think it's good that the leading AI development company is really leaving this open to discussion and, you know, acknowledging its own power and downside. Because while, yes, they are developing some really great tools, it also can have some harmful side effects. And it's great that we're getting to have this open discussion and talk about it going forward. But that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the examples. Now, part of the reason why this is so amazing amazing is that all you need is a 15 second sample. Yes, you heard me right. 15 seconds. That's all you need for this to clone your voice, which is why they've been sitting on this for a year and a half because only 15 seconds. It's super easy just to walk up to someone on the street, grab a 15 second voice grab, and then be able to clone their voice. It is so easy to you know, cause harm with this. But as we're gonna see here through their examples, this also is a great opportunity for you know the good benefits of this. So yeah, this is sort of in that moral gray area, but let's go ahead and check out some of these good use cases. Now this first one is providing reading assistance to non-readers. And this is set in the context of like an education based where it's helping children who struggle to read and you know would benefit from more of like a personal AI you know voice to sort of make them feel comfortable and help them learn the subjects. So let's go ahead and listen to this reference audio here. Force is a push or pull that can make an object move stop or change direction. Imagine you're riding a bike down a hill. First, the push you give off the ground is the force that gets you going. So that's the reference audio that they gave the AI, and this is what they generated. I'm only gonna go through the biology one here, but there's a lot of different other examples. If you wanna go check it out, link will be down in the description below. Some of the most amazing habitats on Earth are found in the rainforest. A rainforest is a place with a lot of precipitation, and it has many kinds of animals, trees, and other plants. Tropical rainforests are usually not too far from the equator and are warm all year. So for a 15 second clip, that sounded really good. It's getting crazy how good this is. Now the next example was for translating content like videos and podcasts. Now as a creator, this is the one that excites me the most because it allows us to get our content out to more people. And what's really cool about this model is that it keeps the accent. So we're gonna listen to a reference audio that was recorded in English. And then in the examples that we listen to, it's going to sound like the language has an English accent, which is so mind blowing and just adds to the realism of it. Friendship is a universal treasure. It brings joy, support, and laughter into our lives no matter where we are in the world. True friends stand by us through thick and thin, sharing our joys and easing our sorrows. Let's celebrate the bonds of friendship that connect us all across every language and culture. So it takes this reference audio that was in English, it translates it, and then it spits out an audio clip with the same voice, even with accents, which is just insane. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Spanish and then I'll show the Japanese. La amistad es un tesoro universal. Aporta alegría, apoyo y risas a nuestras vidas sin importar donde estemos en el mundo. Los verdaderos amigos están con nosotros en las buenas y en las malas, compartiendo nuestras alegrías y aliviando nuestras penas. Celebremos los lazos de amistad que nos conectan a todos a través de cada idioma y cultura. And then here's the Japanese. Yujo wa hufenteki na takamono desu. Sekai no doko ni itemo, watashitachi no seikatsu ni yokokobi, sapoto, warai o motarashimasu. Honto no tomodachi wa donna toki mo watashitachi ni yorisoi, yorokobi o wakachi ai, kanashimi o yawaragete kuremasu. So 
Now, if you don't happen to speak another language, you might not fully understand like how amazing this is. But for me, I study Japanese, and this not only does it sound great to me as far as like grammar and sentence wise. It also sounds like someone who spoke English and then was speaking Japanese with an accent. And it's just enough to where it doesn't sound like fluent Japanese, but it also doesn't sound bad. Like this is totally passable Japanese, but it's not like perfect to where you would confuse this person with a native speaker, which I think is just great. But I think what would be even cooler is that if in the future, when we do have access to these kinds of tools, if we could have a slider that says, how fluent do we want it to sound? And then we could choose like super brilliant broken or we could choose like absolutely fluent i think that would just be amazing because clearly we have the technology for this and i would think that it would be harder to replicate an accent than it would be just to sort of like recreate the voice and make it sound more fluent but ultimately i don't know how it works because they don't release how this model specifically works um but maybe in the future we'll learn now this next one is reaching global communities which i think is just trying to get at that this technology has been getting much better at understanding more complex languages where it's not as as you know, English is a very common language, right? Uh, but Swahili, not nearly as common. And so I think what this is getting at is that we can have more support for people who speak more complex and you know not as popular languages, uh, which I think is good. So let's go ahead and play what this reference audio is. Ile kazi ambayo inafanywa kwa umakini sana sana hapa dimagi ni ya kusaidia watu wanaohudumia jamii kwa kuwapatia teknolojia ambayo inasaidia kujenga afya ya umma. Now this generated audio is 41 seconds. I'm not going to play all of it because that's kind of long, but we'll play about 15 seconds of it. Lishe bora ni muhimu katika kuhakikisha kwamba watoto wanakuwa vizuri kimwili na kiakili. Vyakula kama matunda, mboga, protini, kalsiamu na vitamini mbalimbali ni muhimu sana kwa ukuaji wa mifupa na maendeleo ya ugongongo. Now, I don't understand what any of this means, and I don't really have any experience listening to Swahili, but these two clips sounded very similar. So, you know, I think it's great that they are getting better at doing more, you know, abstract languages. So, so I think this tool will be great for more of a global application. Now, this next application is supporting people who are nonverbal, and especially this one highlights multilingual users in particular. Um, so we can take one reference audio and generate two different or more depending you know on the language for people who are nonverbal and need that extra help and could really benefit from this service as a bilingual individual fluent in both english and portuguese i'm contributing my voice to the livox project this recording is intended to assist nonverbal individuals in expressing themselves more fully while preserving the nuances of both languages so here's that generated audio in english excuse me can I get your attention? Thank you for your help. Can we watch a movie tonight? Could you please help me find my glasses? Thank you for your understanding. It means a lot to me. And then here's that same thing in Portuguese. A que horas precisamos sair amanhã? Seria possível diminuir um pouco a música? Com licença, você pode me dar atenção? Vamos assistir um filme hoje à noite? Você poderia me ajudar a achar meus óculos? Obrigado por entender. Isso significa muito para mim. I probably shouldn't have said the same thing because I can't i don't know what this says i don't know if this is the exact same text just translated um but i'm gonna assume it was now i think this one in particular struggled the most as far as you know quality in generated output like this one definitely sounded more like an ai than the rest of them but this still sounded really good so if this is the worst of the bunch you know, it really shows how powerful this tool is. And finally, we have helping patients recover their voice, which I think is just one of the best applications of this because this can really help transform the lives of those who, you know, are unfortunate enough to have lost their voice. So this example has three different audio clips. It has their current voice where they have lost a lot of their ability to speak. And then they have a reference audio from when they were younger and did a presentation for class. And then they have their output, which was from the reference audio, which is what they used to sound like. Hi, everyone. This is what my voice sounds like losing open AI new text to speak smile cause voice engine. I was able to use this 15 seconds of a video I made for a class project to be a reference audio source for the voice you hear right now. What do you think? So that was their current voice, and we can see that it uses the same speech that we just listened to um, in the generated audio. Now, it's unclear if it took this and transcripted it or if someone else manually wrote this down, but I think if it did transcribe it from that as well, I think that's also an amazing feat. 
But let's go ahead and listen to this reference audio. When you have all of your ingredients together, you are going to put the chopped broccoli and chopped banana peppers inside the bowl. And now this is very adverse. You can use anything that you would like. If you want to use cucumbers, you can chop up cucumbers and put this in here. And here's that generated audio that was created from this reference audio. Hi everyone, this is what my voice sounds like using OpenAI's new text-to-speech model called Voice Engine. I was able to use just 15 seconds of a video that I made for a class project to be the reference audio source for the voice you hear right now. What do you think? Now I think this is the most powerful application of this um, because this has the power to transform people's lives um, because you only need 15 seconds of audio to create this new voice. And it doesn't matter what is being said. So, you know, if someone's looking back through old videos when they were a little bit younger before they lost their voice, they can just use one of those and have it create a really realistic sounding voice just based off of a short clip, uh, which is just amazing that you don't have to have, you know, a long pre-scripted audio recording that you upload to one of these services. This can do it, doesn't matter what you say, and it's only 15 seconds and it comes out amazingly. So that was all of the examples and use cases that they have provided in this, but keep in mind, there's tons of others that they just didn't share. And this was just a very small sneak peek into what this can really do. So, you know, it really shows how under wraps they've kept this thing. Now this next section here is about building voice engines safely. And they talk about sort of a lot of the safety precautions that they have done with this. And they even have watermarking to trace the origin of any audio generated, which I have no idea how that would work, but I think that's a great idea to do. And they also have very strict rules as far as, you know, their partners who are testing this um, and what they are allowed to do. So basically they're keeping this very safe and very, you know, non-controversial, I guess, or at least as much as you can be with voice cloning. Um, so I think this is the right move because this is a very morally gray kind of area, but I think it would be bad if this technology just got completely wiped because just people were using it for bad. You know, I think this has the ability to change the lives for so many people. And I think it's good that they're taking precautions seriously because we want to be able to use this good technology for what it's good for without all of the bad stuff being associated with it. So um, I think what they're doing here is great. And as the leading AI development company, they have some looking ahead steps that they want to encourage um, people and the government to sort of enact with this. And those include phasing out voice-based authentication as a security measure, which I think is good. So like bank accounts, people can't get into your bank account and stuff. Exploring policies to protect the use of individuals' voices in AI. So this would be like if I wanted to clone my own voice and use it to make YouTube videos, then that should be protected because it's my own voice. We should be educating the public and understanding the capabilities and limitations of AI technologies, including the possibility of deceptive AI content, which is a huge one because if you go on Facebook, if you're on there for long enough, you'll see a bunch of just AI images and all these old people on Facebook are like, oh my gosh, this looks so real or whatever. And it's like, like it's so obviously fake that this you know, really needs to be taught, not only just in public school growing up, but also to everyone, because it's not just this voice AI that can fool people. There's really good AI video generators out now. There's really good AI photo generators. And, you know, I mean, there's ChatGPT, which you could generate basically fluent speech as well. So, you know, there's tons of new AI out here that people need to be educated on. So it's really good that OpenAI is, you know, really saying, hey, we need to get out here and really make sure that people are educated. And then their final thing here is accelerating the development and adoption of techniques for tracking the origin of audiovisual content, which I think is another great one to include here because it's basically like a transparency icon. Um, that people can always like look very easily to tell if something is an AI. And I know more and more companies are getting on board with this because just this month, YouTube actually rolled out a feature that required you um, to say if what you're uploading has been altered by AI or not, which I think is really good because it's just good to be able to, you know, look down the description of a video and say, oh, okay, so this was generated by AI or whatever. But of course, you're going to have people who don't follow the rules and don't do the checks on that. So you know, you do have to sort of be able to enforce that, but it's good that companies are starting to look into it and starting to add those checks. So that way it's at least easier to, 
mandate. And they end off by saying it's important that people around the world understand where this technology is headed, which I think is why they decided to, you know, finally, after a year and a half, you know, release, you know, sort of what this technology is capable of, because, you know, they have been sitting on this for a while. Um, but yeah, they are basically encouraging, you know, policymakers, which is the first one on the list, which really needs to be getting done here because uh, AI is accelerating at an increasingly fast rate and the people in the government are not really talking about it at all, which I don't know if I would trust the government to talk about this anyway, but uh, yeah, we really need some regulation on this and more universal adoption and policies as far as how to regulate AI. But yeah, OpenAI's voice engine is absolutely insanely powerful. And I do think we will get access to this eventually. Although if it took them a year and a half to finally, you know, say that they've been working on it, uh, it might be another year and a half before we actually get hands on testing with it at all. Uh, but I, I, if we do at all, cause you know, who knows the laws may change or whatever, but, um, yeah, I think this has some really great uses, but also, it's potentially dangerous. So we'll just have to see, you know, how, where all this goes. But I think this is a really cool technology to just take a look at and to see what's capable in the world of AI. Thanks for watching. And to discover cool AI tools similar to this, you can check out our website at ai-search.io.